Hi there, welcome to my new playlist which is going to be looking at DSLR photography for beginners. And we look at my kit, um, what I've ended up added to my, adding to my collection. I'll do a few reviews on each of the bits that I've got and hopefully that'll help you make a decision on what bits and bobs to potentially buy if DSLR photography is something that you are interested in getting into. Now, I'm not by any means an expert on this, so if you're looking to learn about what different terms mean, how to take photographs, this won't be the playlist for you. This is more looking at it from a beginner's point of view and uh, what I've thought of the kit I've bought since learning a little bit more about it, whether or not I would recommend the particular things I've got or what I might change if I was to start all over again. If you are looking to learn about uh, DSLR photography, I would strongly recommend looking at Mike Brown's channel. I'll put a link to his page in the description box below. Really enthusiastic guy, probably one of my favourite YouTube um, channels that I've subscribed to. He's taught me a lot of everything I've picked up about DSLR photography so far. So his channel, check it out if you are looking to learn it a little bit more. So, the camera I first got for my first DSLR and first proper camera is the Nikon D3400, which is Nikon's entry level, um, most recent entry level DSLR in terms of being bottom at, of the price range. Um, varies in price, I don't know what the most recent price would be, uh, I think I paid £400 for this which came with the kit lens which I'll talk a little bit about shortly. Uh, you can buy it with the body only and no lens which initially I thought well what would be the point in that but I can actually see a benefit to that which if you bear with me I will get on to shortly. Um, this camera does everything you would expect a, a basic DSLR to do. It get, allows you full manual control over three things I would first recommend learning about would be ISO, which is a number that tells you how sensitive your camera sensor will be to light that's coming in. The higher that is, the more noise you will tend to get in your image. A better body will be able to handle a better ISO level. Uh, which would be beneficial for photography at night or um, any sort of dark conditions indoor for example. Um, you've then got your aperture value which tells you how wide open the camera's aperture can get to allow more light in onto the sensor. So basically another strange thing about photography is the <laughs> the lower the aperture value is of a lens, the wider the aperture will be and the more light it will be able to let in. So for example, you could get a lens that has an aperture value of 1.4, which means the aperture can open up really wide and allow a lot of light in. Uh, I'll briefly mention what the benefits of that are in a minute. Or you could get a, a lens that only can go to a wide aperture, as wide an aperture of say 3.5 like this kit lens, which means it won't open up as wide and won't allow as much light into your sensor, which will mean in order to get a sharp image, you may need to bump your ISO up to allow your sensor to be more sensitive to light, but that could introduce some noise. So it's, it's a trade-off in a way. Obviously though, the wider an aperture a lens can, can create, the more expensive that lens tends to be, so budget can come into it as well. Um, finally, your shutter speed, uh, I'm not a huge expert on this, but the one thing I would recommend, a good tip that Mike Brown uh, suggested to me, is if you're taking a photograph, whatever the focal length of your lens is, or whatever focal length you are taking a picture at, you would want a shutter speed to be at least as high as that in order to make sure your image is sharp and you don't get any camera shake affecting your image. So for example, this particular lens I've got on the camera at the moment is a zoom, re zoom lens. It goes from 18 millimeters up to 55 millimeters. If I was shooting this at um, 50 millimeters, for example, 
then I would want my shutter speed to be at least 1 over 50th, one or 1 50th of a second in order to minimise any effect that camera shake is going to have when I press the shutter button. Uh, so I've talked a little bit there about the three things that I think are the most important things to learn about initially. What about the camera itself? Well, when I bought this, I think it was £400 I got it for, but as I say, the, the, the price will vary from the time of the year. I'll put a link in the description uh, to where I got it from if you're interested in checking it out. Things I like about this camera is it's got a nice, a nice comfortable grip. Um, there's also a wee rubber bit on the back for your thumb that supports your grip a little bit more. I love the shutter button on this Nikon camera. It's it feels really quite robust and quite well made um, compared to the Canon camera I'm actually filming this on. I don't like the shutter button as much on that. It feels a bit more flimsy. Um, it's got an LCD screen on the back here that allows you to see whatever you're you're looking at. I'm I'm a bit more. I'm not as old fashioned. <laughs> old fashioned might not be the right word, but I don't like looking through the viewfinder as much. I prefer using the screen. Um, if anyone knows why so many people prefer looking through the viewfinder, leave me a comment. And let me know because um, certainly nothing. Not not something I'm interested in. Um, I find the LCD much more useful. Uh, the camera itself does have an HDMI port and a micro USB port on the side will allow you to hook it up to a screen, bigger screen to be able to see what you are looking at if that's something you're interested in. Uh, the one negative with this that I should have probably thought about and done a little bit more research on before buying it was that it's not got a microphone input. So which is why I've ended up buying this Canon camera I'm filming on just now, a cheap Canon EOS M3, is that it's got a microphone input which is allowing me to get a bit better audio for filming my reviews. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to film this review of this camera if I didn't have a second camera. Um, the other thing that's missing from this camera that I wish I, I, I got instead and that leads me to a second camera I would recommend as a beginner's camera that is a little bit more expensive is the screen doesn't f articulate, flip out and allow you to twist it round to change the angle of the screen. So for example if I was taking a, a low down shot I would need to be able to get in behind the camera to see what I'm actually taking. Whereas if you've got one of those flip out screens that articulates, you would be able to adjust that and be able to see what your image is without moving at all. Similarly up high, you could articulate the screen down. You cannot do this with a D3400. So that's one of the big negatives with this camera um, that would recommend a upgrade from, from this to the D5600 has both an articulating flip out screen and also has the microphone input which would allow you to connect an external mic and get better audio if you're doing a little bit more video. Um, Other things men worth mentioning with this camera is it does have your standard tripod attachment at the bottom. Really recommend getting a tripod as well if you're looking to do some photography because if you can't get that shutter speed fast enough, given your aperture, then you may need a tripod to help keep your camera steady. Uh, if you get into long, long exposure photos is something I was quite interested in and having a tripod is essential for that along with some filters. Uh, but I'll save them for another video. Onto the kit lens itself. Now, the kit lens goes from 18 to 55 millimeters. This is a crop sensor DSLR camera, which means basically it's, it's equivalent full frame field of view. I think Nikon's crop value is 1.5. So whatever value you see on your DX lens, your, your crop sensor lens, you multiply that by 1.5 and it gives you the full frame equivalent value of what that focal range would be. Um, basically on a DX camera your your standard human eye sight would be effectively about 35 millimeters on the DX lenses uh, it's more 50 millimeters on a full frame uh, lens so for this it gets that normal field of view that the human eye would be most familiar with but you can also go a little bit wider to 18 
and get a, allow you to get a little bit more in 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 your shot or you could zoom in a little bit to 55 but it's not a huge range in terms of the zoom the aperture also is 3.5 at 18 millimeters but the minimum or the the widest the aperture can go at this the fully zoomed in position of 55 millimeters is 5.6 which doesn't let as much light in your aperture also helps control your uh, depth of field so the wider the aperture or the lower the f number of the lens the more blurry a background you can get with your image and that was something certainly that i was really interested in for getting a dslr in the first place was to be able to get those pictures that have that, that really nice shallow depth of field where you've got your subject in sharp focus but then your background's all blurred out. I really, really like those images. So this lens isn't great for that. You can get a little bit of bokeh, which is that background blur, but not a great amount, which is why someone might prefer to buy the body only and then buy a cheap lens like the 35 or 50 millimeter prime that goes to a 1.8 f number so the aperture opens right up and gets you that best black background blur that you can get um, if you're interested in my thoughts on those two lenses check out my individual review for them uh, where i have put up some sample photos of what you can achieve with them and talked about my positives and negatives as well uh, so overall if you're looking at getting into dslr photography Nikon for me, I prefer Nikon over Canon. I do have one of each. I prefer the menu set up in the Nikon, the feel of the, the camera itself and the way the camera actually handles. But there, that will be completely down to you. So what I would recommend is actually going into a shop, picking up a Nikon, a Canon, even a Fujifilm or Panasonic. Uh, have a feel for the camera, see what feels good to you, navigate through its menus. Um, see what seems to be the most um, usable for you and make your decision from that. Uh, Tony Northcroft, I think it is, is that his name? Tony Northcroft? Uh, also another photography channel I would recommend taking a look at. He recommends picking a camera based on uh, three things, can't remember off the top of my head what they are. One is how it feels, one is what your budget is and one, I think the third one is what your, your actual goal is for the camera. For me, it was just general photography. I've developed a bit of an interest for landscape photography um, and street photography as well, a wee bit. So the lenses I've ended up using the most and the ones I would recommend, I will talk about in other videos. Hope that was at least uh, a little bit useful for any beginners, as I say, not aimed at experts this, purely for beginners who don't know anything about photography like I was when I first started and are interested in stepping up to DSLR photography. Oh, one last thing I would mention is if you're potentially looking at the D5600, which is the step up from this, that'll give you that articulating screen and the microphone input, one thing I have heard that is a negative about that is the battery life is not as good as the D3400. I have to say, the battery on this is outstanding. I can go a whole day of shooting and still make it through on just one battery. I have bought a second battery, but um, so far I haven't needed to use that on the same day of shooting. So really impressed by the battery life of this camera. Um, but yeah, any questions guys, pop them down in the comments below. As I say, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, hopefully that's given you a wee bit of insight into a beginner's DSLR. Thanks for watching.